Hello and welcome to the session. In this session, I shall be introducing the topic of time series analysis. And today we shall see its introduction, definition of time series, what are its objectives, its components, and the analysis of time series. So let's begin with the definition. A series of observations on a variable recorded after successive intervals of time is called a time series. So this successive intervals of time are usually equal intervals in any unit of time so which could be say 10 years a year a month a week a day so on so this time series data are bivariate data in which one of the variable is the time which is represented in the x-axis so it is denoted by y t so that is the letter t the other variable could be anything else which is denoted by the letter y so y with a subscript t so next is objectives. So the time system implies its decomposition into various factors that affect the value of its variable in a given period of time. So the main objectives are to study the past behavior of the data and to make forecast for the future and to understand the present in a more efficient way by analyzing the time series data and it helps in business planning and it also helps in comparative study of two different series of data so now let's look at the components of the time series so basically we have four components of time series which are secure trend or simply trend denoted by the letter t and periodic or oscillatory variations so this is further divided into two types. So that is long-term cyclic variation denoted by the letter C, short-term seasonal variation denoted by the letter S, and fourth one, random or irregular variation denoted by the letter R. So now let's look at all the all these components one by one. So let's begin with the first one. So that is the secular trend. So it is the tendency of the data to increase or to decrease or to stagnate over a long period of time. And uh, most of the business and economic time is series would reveal a tendency to increase or to decrease over a number of years. So for example, the data related to industrial production, agricultural production, bank deposits. So that shows an increase in trend. So the magnitude of these data have been raising over a long period of time. So as opposed to this, a time series may also reveal a declining trend. So for example, with improved medical facilities, the death rate is likely to show a declining Trend. So the time series data are usually taken for longer period of time, say for 10 years or above. And the longer a period, the better or smooth, most smooth, the trend value obtained would be. So it shows the, the variable has increased or decreased over a long period of time. So what are the objectives of trend measurement or measuring the trend? So to study the past growth or to decline of the series. So we know that this will help us in our business decision making. And assuming the same behavior to continue in future, so it could be used in forecasting. So then influence of other factors could be determined by identifying and eliminating the trend. So once we eliminate the trend, the residual factors will have the seasonal and cyclic or irregular variation. So then further, the trend of two or more time series could be used for their comparison. So in the sense, we can check which of the data is increasing more rapidly and which has higher rate of increase or lower rate of increase or decrease. So now we look at how the trend is. So we can demonstrate it using the graph. So this is the secular trend and x-axis, so this is the x-axis say in years and y-axis has the population of the city in millions. So in certain point of time, so the population was here, so then increased very gradually to some values. So when we join these dots, we'll get a smooth curve like this. So if I have to get the trend of the data, I can simply draw a line. So we see that there is a gradual increase in this manner. And there is a linear trend in the, of the data. 
so this is secular trend and next is seasonal variation so this seasonal variation is defined as the repetitive and predictable moment around the trend line in one year or less so we see that this is for a year or less so it is detected by measuring the quantity of interest for small time intervals such as days weeks months or quarters of a year and these variations occurs over a short period of time say within a year due to seasonal factors such as climate conditions customs and traditions so the short term variation is something like this so this is the short term variation that is seasonal variation so within a year if there is a fluctuation increase in the sales so for example the sale of warm clothes that is woolen clothes which raises in the month of december when it's very cold and it decreases when it's hot so and any other products which are seasonal or related to the festival like sale of crackers during festival of deepavali so this is seasonal variation and next is cyclic variation so this cyclic variation it repeats after regular interval of time so the time is called the period of oscillation so it doesn't follow any regular pattern however it repeats after a certain interval of time regularly so the time interval is usually long which could be between 3 to 10 years or so on so we have the cyclic variation something like this so this is a cyclic variation and is y axis is cycles and uh, x axis is years so here there is up and downs and uh, so upper part we can tell the business is at boom and here we can tell that there is a recession period and here at the lower point we can tell that there is a depression and again there is a recovery so by this we can we understand that this cyclic manner in which the data tends to increase and decrease after regular interval of time is called cyclic variation and next is random variation so these are unpredictable variations occurring due to random factors this is nothing fixed and nothing regular so it doesn't follow any regular pattern and can be obtained as a residue after the elimination of other factor so we do not have a specific way of finding the random variable so the only way is to eliminate all the remaining factors and as a residue if there is any random variable so there is in the data it will be obtained so although it doesn't occur regularly it affect its effect are always very intense so for example let's say the death rate at the of the population in a city so let's say we denote the death rate we may see that it is usually following a pattern something like this so maybe which is almost gradual in different months so now suddenly what happens at a certain point maybe due to some disaster that is natural disaster or something it may may increase to a very high value so for example maybe an attack or war or say any disease which has spread around in a country or area due to which suddenly in a certain month or maybe between a certain time period period the death rate may increase and go to a very high level in that city so now this is due to a random factor so it's not a seasonal or it's not a regular and it's when it has occurred here see here so and when it will occur next so nobody knows that so it may occur or it may never occur so once if at all it occurs again after a certain period of time so like if there if there is a flood earthquake so that way there is no way by which we can predict these factors and also we do not know what would be the magnitude of these so they do not have any thing regular so now let's move on to the analysis of time series so the purpose of time series is to decompose it into its various components which we have seen just now so there are basically two models based on the assumptions regarding the manner in which their components have combined themselves and these models are additive model and multiplicative model so now let's look at both of these one by one 
first is additive model so this model is based on the assumption that are that the value of the variables of a time series at a point of time t is the sum of the four components and it is symbolically it can be written as yt equals tt plus ct plus st plus rt so where this t is trend c is cyclic s is seasonal and r is random components of time series at the time t so this model assumes that all the four components act independently that is one component has no effect on other irrespective of other magnitudes so next is multiplicative model so this model is based on the assumption that the value of the variables of a time series at a point of time t is the product of the four components so symbolically it can be written as yt equals tt star ct star st star rt so this t is a trend c is a cyclic s is a seasonal and r is random components of time series at the time so this model implies that although the four components may be due to the different causes so they are strictly speaking not independent of each other and now which of these models are commonly in use so there is a very little arrangement about the validity of the models assumed above so it's not certain as to how the components combine themselves that we do not know so then consequently various mixed types of models have also been suggested where say two components are added and the remaining two are multiplied or three are added and one is multiplied to it and so on but there but there is combined and mixed type of models are not used very often so the most commonly used models are either the additive or multiplicative models so we shall so we shall be taking the multiply multiplicative model for our study so that the model the multiplicative model which characterizes the majority of time series in economic and business fields so that was the introduction and its components of the time series analysis so thanks for watching